Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 90 Know It All podcast. This is episode number four, and I will be honest with you guys, I have no idea what day of the week it is, what the date is. It is just a complete blur right now for me. Um, I don't, like I said, I just don't know what is going on. I am just at a loss for things, and it has just been... It's been crazy. It has been crazy to uh, just go through the last few days and, you know, just it is what it is. It's, it's been uh, a unique experience, I guess is the best way to put it. But at the same time, it's been fun. been doing a lot of stuff at home. And, you know, I'm excited for today. I'm excited for uh, what we're going to talk about. I got a guest caller, uh, Ben Kruger, who'll be uh, talking in just a minute with us. And guys, it's just, you know, Ben is a crazy busy guy. He does the Cascade Collegiate League, Mercedes-Benz Baseball. Uh, he's an assistant coach for Everett. Uh, so he's a guy who just is uh, just going nonstop. And, and I'm excited that he's uh, going to join us today. But before we do that, guys, I do want to say thank you to the Patreon supporters we have out there. They have been amazing. I've been communicating with them uh, the last day or two. Uh, about the summer leagues and what their players are going to be doing because right now it's just it's crazy that I'm not able to be out there photographing games right now normally I'd be out there every night photographing games so they are keeping me going they're keeping not any know-it-all going so a big thank you to those patreon supporters I have if you're thinking about being a patreon supporter go to not any know allcom I've got a link that will send you there I've also got a link to a shop in which you can buy nine inning know-it-all gear. So if you're looking at getting a, a shirt or something, you know what? I've got that available as well. Shirts, got the different tri-colored, you know, sleeves, different colors, baseball type shirts, got stuff that my wife and daughters have designed as well. So a few things out there. And once again, guys, Patreon, buying gear, that all helps nine inning know-it-all, keeps us going, keeps us paying for things. I mean, even the podcast, this was an expense that I wasn't expecting this year, but because of what's going on, I thought it was necessary to, to keep the momentum going and just keep things, um, you know, moving forward. So it is what it is. I'm, I'm glad I'm doing the podcast. It's fun. It's exciting. You know, right now I'm wearing my pajamas. I'm wearing my, you know, Star Wars t-shirt. I'm relaxing on the couch and doing this. So that part of it, I actually like better than the YouTube videos, but at the same time, I'd rather be out taking, doing photographs and all that stuff. So so, guys, it looks like Ben is actually online. Ben, can you hear me? Hey, what's going on, Josh? Not much. How are you doing? Doing really well. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, so, Ben, right off the bat, you know, with everything that's going on, you know, I've been kind of mentioning this on, on Twitter and talking with other people about it, the impact of losing the spring schedule for all college and high school sports is going to put a very huge emphasis on summer ball and, you know, for, for the Northwest, you're one of those guys. You run a summer league team. You run the college summer league, the Cascade Collegiate League. How important is that summer league going to be this summer compared to other summers? Oh, it's going to be huge. You're, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's having all of our seasons halted uh, to a screeching halt. You know, it puts so much more emphasis on just the next time that we're all able to play. And there's implications that go all the way to the top of professional baseball, um, you know, speaking to a lot of professional scouts and cross checkers and a lot of uh, really high, high octane talent that was going to be on display you know, late into the spring in the college world series, juniors getting a chance at the draft, uh, junior college guys getting a chance to really showcase what they can do, um, you know, really come to a screeching halt. So it's going to be really big just to see the influx of talent that would not have normally played summer baseball collegiately. Uh, those guys, those Friday night starters for UCLA, those Friday night guys for UW, those players that you would have never imagined, maybe they're in the Cape Cod League, or if not, they're just, they're just shut down because they're so they're you know they're being protected, um, you know, for professional baseball. They will be playing this summer, you know, assuming that we all, we all do get a chance to go play. So just seeing the influx of talent already trickling to the West Coast League and trickling down the pipeline, you're going to see more talent in the even the, the competitive developmental leagues as well, like our own, uh, the Cascade League. You're going to see guys that probably would normally be on a 10-day contract with the West Coast League affiliate. There may not be room. Those guys might be playing for us. So 
for us, we just want to make sure that we are opening our doors and welcoming everybody with open arms um, and just being a resource for players, no matter what they need, uh, so that we can be a, a resource for those guys and get those guys taken care of this year. Yeah, and you, and you kind of talked about the guys who get 10-day contracts, and I said this yesterday, there's going to be a, a big influx of players to start the season. Right off the bat, if, if all the seasons get started on June 1st or whenever about that time, a lot of guys would be at the College World Series and not be able to start their seasons with the West Coast League. But this year, it, they're going to be there. They're going to be ready to go. And it's going to impact a lot of the, the JUCO guys who maybe would get those 10-day contracts and stuff. So, you know, looking at that, that's a, that's a pretty big impact, especially here in the Northwest with um, all the NWAC guys who normally would have gotten those 10-day contracts and had a chance to show their ability at that higher level of competition. Oh, 100%. No, you're absolutely right. And I've, this has been a wild time. I just want to, first off, before I go too much further, I just want to say, you know, our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody across the country and our world, you know, that's been impacted by this. It, it's, it's hard, even like you said earlier, it's hard to even, you know, go right into the baseball side of things. There's so many bigger things going on you know, in our nation and across. But I think this can be a healthy diversion for us just to be able to you know, focus on these kids that work so hard for that opportunity. You know, they, they got contacted by the Ridgefield Raptors or the Portland Pickles or the Wenatchee Apple Sox or someone because they had a breakout, you know, sophomore year in the NWAC. They had a 10-day, and now, you know, there's opportunities that those opportunities may need to go to other guys. The biggest thing that I've just been saying, you know, to consult with players is your opportunities aren't going away. Nothing's being taken away from you. You're just going to have to work harder. Um, you're going to have to prove it. You're going to have to really just take take advantage and capitalize on every opportunity, and just know that you know no one's mad at you. No one's taking anything away from you. They don't they don't not believe in you. You just may need to you know to, you know, whatever opportunity you have, you just need to capitalize on what you have. And I think that in speaking to some West Coast League general managers, we have really strong relationships with um, these West Coast League teams. They host the CCL Showcase team. They pick up our high performing players later on in the summer, and they've been just phenomenal to us. Um, since our, our first season last year, they're feeling that bind as well. They're also, you know, concerned about having guys that maybe they originally committed to, but now they've they've got a phone call from another big Pac-12 school or a big SEC school that needs to make a player placement. Um, so these things are they're all being worked out. Each each organization is handling, you know, things logistically on roster from a roster construction standpoint on their own. But the biggest thing that I just like to tap on the guys is you're still going to get your chance. Don't worry about where you're playing or how many people are in the stands watching you or what scouts are there, whatever it is. We're all just going to be fortunate and blessed to get back to the game we love, you know, as soon as possible. Yeah, and, you know, with this, you know, assuming everything does get back to normal, at least enough where we can play games again, you know, in June or so, you know, you have the Cascade Collegiate League. Now, this is going into the second year, and this is actually – good timing for the need right now that we have for for players to get innings in, get at bats in for, for you. I mean, last year was the inaugural year. What sparked the idea to get this league going and, and really get it uh, developed for players? Yeah, no, absolutely. It was a really exciting opportunity. Last year was my first season coaching collegiately. Um, had the opportunity to coach at Shoreline Community College up just north of Seattle and um, through that process was also running the Mercedes program and we run an NWAC scout team as well. So guys are going off and, and playing against the junior colleges, those uncommitted guys during the fall while I'm over at my community college coaching. Um, and they had an opportunity to play. And, you know, for us kind of leaning up against the wall, you know, speaking to some of our colleagues in the NWAC, we basically just, you know, started to build all these relationships with the managers and the associate head coaches within the league and kind of started asking, Hey man, you know, where are you sending your guys? Where are you sending your guys? And of course, you're sending your trying to send your top players, your top end arms, your starting shortstop. You're trying to get those guys into the West Coast League or maybe into the ex- exhibition league or somewhere in Canada. But it's that middle tier. It's that your ninth best guy or your eighth best guy through your 25th, 26th, 27th best guy. Where are those guys going? And and a lot of the, the answers were were not really clear. It's kind of like, hey, you know, they might just go train. They might work. They might get into a sock net at home and those aren't wrong answers. Those are things that you can do. And I've had players even at Everett now where I'm coaching now, um, some guys that do really well training on their own and have the opportunity to be really self-motivated and disciplined. Um, but there's also a lot of guys that really want to play and they need to see the, the you know, the, the, the innings on the mound. They have to have that bat. They need to get their eyes dialed in for ball ball. 
And so for us, it was really just launching a competitive developmental vehicle for these guys to be able to come play where there's no discrimination on what your stats were your freshman year. I was a platoon guy. I didn't start every day and I didn't get any all league honors. So nobody wanted me. No college leagues wanted me. Um, these aren't bad players. These are guys that work hard. They may be a tool or two away from, from appearing in a West Coast League game or playing in front of a paid attendant. But the coolest part is, is as we saw last year in our first year, we were able to move 16 players on to West Coast League affiliates by season's end. These players developed over the course of the summer. These guys saw, you know, games. They, made, they got that confidence boost to where whenever there was a hole for the Sweets or the Pippins or the Lefties or the Bells needed a catcher late in the season, you know, we'd get a phone call and we'd say, hey, listen, this is the guy you want. This guy's made some big strides. So to see those guys be able to go up is something that we really promote. Um, so where did it start from? We basically just networked and we asked the league and we said, we're not going to build this league unless we have enough buy-in across the, the entire NWAC particularly. And that was the biggest thing for this next year. Right now we have 19 programs um, represented in the Cascade League, which is just over two-thirds of the entire league. And that is just absolutely phenomenal because – these coaches are trusting us with their guys. They're, you know, promoting us and having the opportunity to put their players in our league and, and trusting that we're going to take care of them and they're going to come back excited and run up the fall ball. So having that buy-in within the NWAC was the absolute must. And now we're getting the NCAA, NAI guys, and even some of the California JUCOs involved as well. Yeah, and I know, you know, last year covering uh, the Cassie Collegiate League, it was a lot of fun for me to be able to be a part of that new league be a part of that that excitement and stuff but you're making a lot of changes this year changes that i love because you know last year you had teams playing all over the place but this year really going to kind of focus the locations and for me as a photographer i mean i've already told you this i love that it makes it easier for me to get to more games more players but what other changes are you are you doing and what really spurned those on yeah no we're we're super excited we're the guys, I want to say first off, the guys absolutely love nine inning know it all. The guys love checking those high resolution action shots. And the coolest thing that people don't know, if you haven't seen Josh's podcast, is you know a lot of these photos that he's taking, they're action shots. They're not just like standing in the box getting a sign from the third base coach. You'll be posted up right behind the third base coach and watching a slide come head first into third base, and the smoke of the dirt and everything's flying up above the kid's face. That, those kind of shots you took this, this past summer, and it was great for the guys, and it really helped build our league. So I want to thank you for that. Um, but we're trying to get it more streamlined so we can have you at more games and, and have people be able to come out and see our entire league play was the main initiative that we wanted to have for, for 2020. So the biggest points that we did was we did a basically a player feedback survey at the end of the summer and really garnered as much feedback as we possibly could because this league is for the players, by the players. We really want to make sure that we're not missing on things that we can improve upon uh, for next year. Traveling was just our absolute biggest thing that we had to fix. We tried to make everybody happy in doing so. We had so many players from Oregon, Canada, as far north as Canada, as far south as southern Oregon. We're trying to play games in Oregon and in Washington and make it all work. Well, in doing so, we created some problems. We, it wasn't very efficient. So this next year, what we're going to do is we're going to have one central playing location where our entire league would call the, the traveling league model. All six of our affiliates will come to one central playing location, whether that be Seattle University, Bannerwood Park, or University of Portland, or, you know, Wenatchee Valley College, where the Apple Sox are hosting us twice this summer. And having all six of those teams come, which a lot of these players, when they play at the 18U level, you know, in tournaments, like for the GSL Showcase or for the Art Right by Seattle Elite League, you know, they're used to having all the teams at one location and they just play it whenever your time is. We're going to kind of build that model for this next season. So you're going to get a chance, A, as a fan or a photographer or a college scout, to see our entire league play. We'll get there early in the morning and be there all the way to at night, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that was the first thing. Um, another area of improvement is going to be increased pitching staff depth. We reconfigured our rosters to accommodate more pitchers. And this is just another thing as a learning curve for us. We, we didn't have enough pitching to be able to supplement when we did have those players get called up. To the West Coast League or to other leagues, we would have these gaping holes, and they're hard to to plug those holes to pick up additional players because at that time late in the season, you know, it's just too late to come on a two week contract or one week contract. So what we're doing is we're increasing the number of pitchers on each staff. And but the biggest thing too is when you have the travel optimized, where you're playing at one central location, if one team is say short on an arm or somebody isn't quite ready to make their start or someone isn't feeling very well, they're ill in the morning and they can't keep breakfast down or whatever the reason is, 
you can easily just plug and play another player from one of the other five affiliates. Because in the, in the past, last year, like you said, we have some players, some teams playing in Oregon while there were games going on in Seattle. And you couldn't do that. You couldn't re-jersey a player up if necessary. You'd have to put a two-way guy on the mound or somebody that wasn't going to be throwing as, as hard as a normal pitcher-only type guy. So now having the optimization of your location, one central location, and having increased pitching depth, we're hoping to see fewer position players having to come in late in the season. Um, the final component was improved indoor facility access for our guys um, in between the middle of the weeks. So as a traveling league, we are playing Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That accommodates, allows guys to train at drive line, allows guys to pick up summer work, to complete their internships for our, our four-year university guys. But we've increased the number of facilities that our guys are going to be able to hit at and throw and lift. So we're going to have indoor facilities in Redmond, Tacoma, Seattle, Gallup, um, as well as uh, just more opportunities for guys to, put, to get work in. So that was something that was lifted on our player feedback. So really just trying to overall increase the competitiveness of the league, um, really work on, on giving guys more opportunities and just make it more efficient and overall a better quality product for the guys. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I said it last year after I watched the, the first weekend that I went to, and I said this league has a chance to really be something special, something bigger here in the Northwest, uh, not because we don't already have a league in the West Coast League, but just because we, we, there's always room for more baseball. And I love that. And I love the fact that, you know, this league is, is sending guys up, but it's also – kind of giving young coaches an opportunity to get their first taste of being a coach and, and being in there and kind of having a different mindset as well. Because you had some guys last year that that was their first chance to really say that they're a coach and get in there. Absolutely. And that's, that's one of my favorite parts about this is it's really the opportunity league. It's, it's, an, it's a come one, come all. You say you want this dream. You say you want to pursue it, come pursue it. And, and watching our guys, our coaches too, Kelly Fitzpatrick was the manager of the team that won the entire league last summer, the, the Llamas. He accepted a pitching coach position with the, the Yakima Pittons in the West Coast League. And it's not to say that he wouldn't have gotten that if he hadn't coached in the CCL. He's such a, a strong you know, pitching mind and a great, great friend of ours. Um, he actually pitched for the Pippins as well when he was in college. So, um, but just to see that promotion of, you know, I'm sure that the Pippins trust that he's, you know, he has that mindset and he's locked and loaded and ready to go especially getting the experience under his belt this past summer for us. And for us, it's a, it's a great congratulatory post that we get to make on Instagram and Twitter to say congratulations not only to our players that are moving on to play at the next highest levels, but also our coaches, those young guys that really just need a crack at it. So we're excited moving forward to keep offering positions to people that are you know, either just graduating from college, just wrapping up their pro career, or they're just taking their first college job similar to what I did this past season um, over at Shoreline now at Everett in my second season coaching collegiately. Um, somebody just gave me, give me a chance is really all you're trying to do. So we're super excited about that as well. And then, you know, kind of shift gears a little bit. Obviously the Cascade League takes a lot of, a lot of time from you, but you also do the, uh, the Ben's Baseball, which is an 18 and under uh, team, kind of a scout team. You've had some amazing talent on that team. I got to photograph you guys last year uh, at a tournament and, you've had some, some, just some dudes who can throw, who can hit, you know, what's it like being a part of that program as well? Oh man, that, I love the Mercedes program. I just, I love the guys We're we have a really, really special group, especially this year, but we never forget the, the first year it was in 2017. We launched that 501c3 wanted to really break the mold, wanted to build a program. As soon as I graduated from college, um, came back home to Seattle, kind of started my corporate career Taught myself working 100 hour work weeks, you know, in a, in a nine to five type job, but staying late, coming early and, you know, climbing the corporate ladder really well, but really wasn't fulfilled, wasn't doing what I loved as much. Mercedes was built, you know, in, in the middle of the night. It was built at two in the morning, three in the morning, designing the logo, getting all the procurement, ordering, filling out all the registrations, the state of Washington, getting the nonprofit status dialed in and had that first group of kids. We only moved two players on. Both players were seniors at uh, the college programs, but now entering our third year, we've sent 45 guys on uh, to college. It's six time national letters of intent and had some, some really talented players play at Vanderbilt and some committed to Oregon State, play programs like Xavier and Wazoo. So it's been really special just to see the talent in it. You know, guys that want to come and they gravitate towards that grassroots. We only want to run one team. It's an 18 and under, like you said, we don't have like the younger groups you go all the way down, like some of these other programs do, because we're trying to focus all of our attention into college prep. It's, it's, it's for elite prospects that want intense classroom curriculum. They want that 
you know, hotel lobby, conference room reserved but right before a tournament where we have two and a half hours to break down pitch design or sequencing. College coaches come in, our colleagues from the Cascade League, we pull in coaching staff from Everett CFD and some of our, our friends across the NWAC to come and speak to the boys. And the, the best part is during the summer is they play and then we try to find homes for them and they get a chance to go play everywhere. So that was a big thing for me was wanting to make sure that in having a, a collegiate summer prep program and coaching collegiately that I am having all these Mercedes guys have the opportunity to be recruited by the entire baseball world and not just my college. Right. I don't want to have that nepotism where it's like, all right, if you're really good, you got to come to my college. Um, I want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to recruit these players because they're really special. So we're, we're super blessed and excited to see where these guys take off this next year. Yeah. And I was excited even last fall when you had that showcase uh, down in Ridgefield. That was amazing to see those guys and all those guys I got to meet at, at Baseball Northwest and doing other things. And there was just, it was a good group of guys, guys who were fun. They were enjoying the game, but they were, uh, they were still motivated, still focused, but it was a, it was a very good group of guys that, you know, I was impressed with, to be honest with you. Oh, that was so much fun. We, we love that showcase. That was a, we ran that NWAC scout team in the fall where they're playing basically 16 to 18 game schedule against the colleges and it really started we kicked off the whole season down in Ridgefield and had a Washington Bend scout team playing against the Oregon scout team and it was really cool because you had guys some of the best talent some of the best pitching talent especially from that baseball northwest tournament Josh does a great job running that um, a lot of those guys basically committed to playing for us in the fall and they came out and they did a really really good job we had pro scouts at a lot of those uh, a lot of those weekends we came out and videoed some guys and we're starting to see some of those players like Cutter Boucher going and committing to Waz Washington State. We had Louis Albrecht that was going to be a catcher with him at Wazoo at one point as well. And some really good guys come out and, and show out. And, and then just looking back at that, that roster from the fall and seeing how many players are now committed. And I, well, not to say that they wouldn't have been committed without our program, but it was just special. And we we're very humbled to have those guys want to come out. And the best part, too, is a lot of these kids don't play for Mercedes in the summer. A lot of these kids play either American Legion in Oregon or they go to play somewhere in Canada, um, or they play for some of the really storied uh, summer select programs around this area, like Rock Creek and Chase D and Boys of Summer. And some of those programs have done a bit bought in and a really good job um, in years past. They basically, those program directors, they let those guys come play for us in the fall. And we don't try to steal them away. We're not trying to convince them to play for us in the summer. You know, we just want to make sure that the fall is something that these guys get a chance to do. Um, and it really worked out really well this year. So that was a really you know, just special time this fall. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool to, to see those guys. And like I said, I saw them at Baseball Northwest, and there was a lot of talent and stuff. But, you know, along with this stuff that you're doing, you're also the assistant coach for, for Everett. And, you know, obviously this year we had the season cut short. What was, it, what was the overall feeling and mood for, from the coaches and the players when all this was, was rolling out and we started losing the season? You know, I remember kind of taking it back to being in the coach's office at Everett Memorial Stadium, and I'm sitting there with Coach Howie and Coach Novak and Dylan and Vander. We've got this incredible Braden Edwards, this great coaching staff, and we're all just, you know, downloading at the, the end of practice. This is just, what, two weeks ago, literally. We're sitting, it feels like months ago, and we're just sitting on our chairs, and we're going over, you know, practice design for the next day and who's going to enter squad, who we're going to throw. We had a great scrimmage, or actually a great four-game exhibition series with Yakima Valley that we're coming off of, and we're really excited about the download on all of our notes. And then, ping, our, our Twitter goes off on all of our phones and it was the Ivy League um, canceling their season. And that was the first domino. And it was heartbreaking. We were at first heartbroken for those guys because we thought it was an isolated, originally like that division of Division One baseball for shutting her down. They were going to be the only one. All of us are going to play. And but I think in the back of our minds, we were, we were all also cognizant of what was going on across our country. And we knew that it was only a matter of time before everyone else followed suit. So the first, the first thought was basically we were heartbroken for the Ivy League. And then immediately it started trickling down into we were heartbroken for our sophomores. And then just, it just everything else, our entire roster, a lot of guys put everybody in this entire community and the entire across the entire country and the world puts everything, just student athletes in general, put everything, all the 6 a.m.s, all the nutrition. We had all of our players meet with nutritionists at Everett um, and had individualized protein powder, creatine, L-glutamine, branch chain amino acids. They're dieting, they're lifting every day, they're hitting, they're going off live batters, everything that they do to chase that Division One dream, that professional dream, 
And before you know it, you're complaining about it being rainy or wet or snowing or cold. It's all taken from you. And it really puts things into perspective. And I, I thought, I thought about this just before I dialed into the podcast was I never want to catch myself complaining about weather or complaining about an umpire or anything, honestly, that's trivial because you just don't know when it's going to be your last game. You don't know when it's going to be your last opportunity and things we didn't know. We just didn't know. And now looking back, I wish that I would have soaked up the sunshine a little bit more, or, you know, been more grateful. And, yeah, I do have the opportunity to coach with these guys at Everett. Um, but just moving forward, puts a lot of things into perspective. And I think for all of us, it's a big wake up call, but the first initial thought was yes, absolutely heartbroken. And now it's, We've moved, we're moving forward. We've done a Zoom call with our 2020 commits just to get them dialed in for next year. And I know a lot of colleges have been doing a really good job of just trying to onboard the next class and make sure they feel comfortable about the landscape and what's been going on and that they still need to stay motivated and driven during this, this period because we haven't forgot about you guys. We're still excited to have you. We're trying to place our sophomores right now and find homes for those guys. But albeit, I think we all understand that there's going to be bigger rosters next year across the entire baseball world. And there's going to be more competition. So I'm just making sure the guys know that we haven't forgot about them, but you also need to be working really, really, really diligently and really hard right now to make sure that you're not a guy that gets passed up on and heading into this next year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know down here I was covering a lower Columbia softball game and, and uh, their starting pitcher, she'd already said this was her final year. And uh, when we started hearing that this could be the end of it, it was, uh, it was tough. As a fan, it was tough to, to see that, to be around that. Um, I couldn't imagine what it's like to be a player or even a coach uh, being in that. So, Ben, before I let you go, I got one question for you. You know, obviously we know everybody's at home right now. They really can't go anywhere. What are some things that you recommend they do while they're at home to keep themselves prepared or even improving as they're getting ready for summer ball and for next fall? Yeah, absolutely. This is still pretty fresh for us because we just had a call this morning with our guys and we went over a lot of this stuff. I would say that most of us don't have access to the same gym equipment that we're accustomed to. We don't have the 24 hour fitness or the LA fitness or whatever. So it's going to be a lot of body weight type stuff. It's going to be core work. You can be a master of core work. You can make sure that you're really self-disciplined. You're waking up in the morning, you're doing your stretching, all of your plyo work, and then you're getting in a bunch of push-up sequencing. You're getting a bunch of ab work and core work, butter kicks, everything that you can do without any weight except for your body weight. Um, and the, the second component is that we can control is we can control our agility and, and how much running we're doing and being able to go outside. That, that's something that is safe. It's something that you can do safely by yourself. Um, you can even put a backpack on and load a bunch of weight into a, a backpack and tie it really tight and, and go run hills, um, run up the street, make sure that you're giving yourself some good grade to run on. Um, you know, you, there's a lot of, this is a time where if you're really self-disciplined and you're really self-motivated, you're going to do really well and you're going to make a lot of gains heading into this next year. If you're somebody that struggles with just the mental health of feeling depressed or feeling down on yourself and, and depression is a big thing, but I just want to say like mental health in general for a lot of athletes right now is very volatile. So if you're not having a good day, if you're waking up and you're, there's stuff on the news that's putting you in a bad funk or stuff that I don't want to go run today. I don't want to go do stuff making sure that you're taking care of your mental health and you're, you're doing stuff that you like to do. You don't have to be able to do body weight stuff and running you know, 24 seven, but do something fun, do something that takes your mind off of things and then channel in and, and keep yourself on track and do things that you can do on your own. Cause these are all, we're going to watch videos on YouTube. We can do pitch design stuff. We can try to emulate a Greg Maddox two seamer or watch some Randy Johnson, nasty slider stuff, highlight videos on MLB network. You can do things to visualize and prepare yourself vi visually as well all from the comfort of your own house. So there's a lot of stuff you can do on your own, um, but just getting creative with it and then motivating people that you see in your network that are falling down in the dumps or not quite feeling like themselves. Call someone you haven't talked to in a while, text someone, an old teammate, a current teammate, ask how they're doing. I've had a lot of time to talk on the phone recently and, and make sure those relationships are still staying strong. So I think those are the recommendations that we have for now. And just listen to what the, the government's telling us. Just listen to what our state officials are saying and follow their orders because the sooner that we are able to distance ourselves and stay healthy the sooner that we're going to be back to baseball and, and that normalcy. Yeah, definitely. You know, that mental health thing is even affecting me um, just with the things, you know, the challenges I face with not any know it all. I understand that. So I've even told people, Hey, if you have any, uh, anything you need to talk about contact not any know it all through Twitter, I'm always available. Um, I, as you said, you know, just reach out and talk to people. It, it does help out. So Ben, 
thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, it's always a joy talking to you. I know you're uh, busy. Even in this time, you're still busy and doing stuff. So thank you very much. No, thank you so much for having me, Josh. Let me know anything I can do for you guys in the meantime. Really, thank you for, pre- for having me on. Well, you guys take it easy, okay? Yep. Talk to you later. Bye bye. So, guys, that was Ben. He was uh, once again. He's the commissioner of the Cascade Collegiate League. He is the director for Mercedes Benz, the the team up in the Seattle area, as well as the assistant coach for Everett. And he really um, he puts so much time and energy into not just baseball, but into the lives of the players that he interacts with. And I love being around him. Um, it's so much fun. I've got to talk to Ben a few times at Baseball Northwest and different tournaments, and he is just high energy, high energy, ton of fun. And I really do appreciate what he does, and I appreciate the fact that he lets 90 and he know it all come in. Uh, last year, I know when I contacted him for the first time about covering the Cascade Collegiate League, uh, there was no hesitation. It was, come on in. You're, you're fully welcomed. And, and I felt that as soon as I got there as well. The coaches, the players all welcomed me in. And I love taking photos of that league. And I'm excited for this year. I'm excited. And I know we've got a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. But I am, I am desperately hoping, selfishly, that this um, takes care of itself, that we see uh, that curve drop down for – uh, this virus so we can get baseball going again to get some normalcy in our in our lives because I know I need that. I know you guys need it. Uh, sports are going to be a big part of our healing uh, as a country, helping us move forward. It, same thing with, with 9-11. When that happened, sports were a big part. So um, I, lo- I love this. I, I'm so glad he came on. He is one of the busiest guys in baseball here in the Northwest. By <laughs> Without a doubt, I don't doubt that one bit. So Guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the 90 Know It All podcast. Once again, I'm Josh, your host. This was episode four. I have no clue what day it is still. I'm sure if I looked around, I'd find the date somewhere on a computer or something like that. But really, guys, you know, do your part. Stay home. Wash your hands. You know, the faster we can get this thing uh, taken care of, the faster we can get back to living our lives and, and you know, going out to games. I missed that so much. I didn't realize how much I missed it until it was taken away. So I know you guys feel the same way. Let's just do our part and uh, let's move forward. Once again, guys, thanks for listening and catch you guys on the next podcast of 980 Know-It-All.